Force versus violence. We need to understand that these concepts are complete opposites of each other. They are not the same. The terms should never be used interchangeably with, with each other because not only are they not even remotely similar, they're direct, diametrically opposed opposites. Let's look at the difference. They're often spoken about as if they're the same and they're used interchangeably when in fact they are actually diametrically opposed to each other. Force, the definition of force, is the capacity to do work or cause physical change in the physical world. Okay, For any change to be created in the physical world in any capacity, force must be used and applied. There's nothing you can do that doesn't require force if you're going to make a change happen in the physical. Okay? So, to set up this equipment, force was required. We had to lift it, we had to set it up, we had to plug in the cables. Force is required to do all those things. It's the capacity to perform physical activity, physical work. Okay? Action, force is actually action with which is in harmony with morality and natural law because the taking of it, the usage of it, doesn't violate rights of other people. So as soon as you're stepping over the line into coercive usage of force, that becomes violence. The initiation of force for coercive reasons, for coercive applications, becomes violence. That's what makes it violence. Force itself is not violence. As such, force is action which one always possesses the natural right to take, and this includes the defense, the physical defense of someone's person. Their, their body, against the act of violence. Force may be applied in that situation. When you are accosted with violence, you do reserve the right to use physical force defensively against such an assault. Violence, on the other hand, and this is the key to keep in mind with violence, it is the immoral initiation of physical power to coerce, compel, or restrain unrightfully. No one has the right to ever enact violence, because violence is always starting it. Initiation, that's the key word there. It's the immoral, the unrightful initiation. So, you know, teachers in schools will, you know, if there's a skirmish that happens between a couple of male students one day, they'll say, it doesn't matter who started it. All that matters is who started it. All that matters is who started it. All that matters. Because the person who actually conducted violence is the person who struck first. They initiated the immoral use of physical behavior, of physical force, to coer physical power to coerce, compel, or restrain. Therefore, when the person beats back that physical assault with force, they have not committed an additional wrongdoing. Okay? It's difficult for many people to understand who are in right brain imbalance. They don't want to acknowledge that you maintain the natural right to use force when you are accosted with violent behavior. If someone just came up to me on the street and started swinging, okay, because they want something I have or just because they don't like the look of me for whatever reason, they don't have the right to do that. If I replied by beating back their attack with sufficient force to put that action down, how many wrongdoings would have been committed? One. Correct. One. Not two. One. Because I maintain the right to defend myself with physical power, with physical force when necessary, when violence, meaning someone else, started the immoral behavior. That's what matters, the initiation. Who started it is all that matters. All that matters. And again, it's a very difficult thing for the ego to comprehend. The ego doesn't want to hear that. It's been conditioned so long that responding with force is also violence. We, we are verbally and mentally equating these two things. And when they, in fact, they are actual complete opposites. Okay, if somebody, if, if, if a kid got hit by somebody else in a school, and then that other kid said, maybe even said once, stop what you're doing, and then when the other kid wouldn't stop, he punched him and knocked him out. Okay? I would ask other people, who's, who, who struck first? And if the kid lying on the floor struck first, I'd say, you got what you deserved. That's it. Because that person had a right to defend themselves. 
You had no right to strike him. You initiated the violence. He responded with defensive force. Many people don't want to hear that because they're very conditioned. I'm not saying you have to do that. You also reserve the right not to do that. But the right does exist. Both things, both rights exist. You would have the right to not respond with physical force, but you would have the right to respond with physical force. See, that's a free will decision that the person has the right to choose between those actions. I don't even look at either one of them as the high road. You know? Personally, I think if somebody keeps beating somebody and keeps conducting violence to them and the other person keeps accepting it and ne never rebels against it and never uses any force to put it down, I almost look at that as the low road. I'm not a pacifist. Not a pacifist. Okay? I am 100% about nonviolence, meaning don't initiate harm to other people. Don't start it. Don't start none, won't be none. In street lingo. That's how, that's how it really is. Okay? But if somebody else starts it, they're asking to be put down with uh, the amount of physical force that is required to put down the act of aggression. Violence is coercive action. See, that's the key. It's always coercion. Saying, you're going to do what I want you to do, or then I'm going to strike. Then I'm going to commit the act of violence. It's coercive. It's action which is always in opposition to morality and natural law for the very reason that it involves the violation of others' rights. That's why it's called violence. It's a violation. The act of violation caused, it resulted in violence. Your rights have been violated. That's why it's called violence. It's the same root word. Violence is action which one never possesses the right to take, ever. There is no such thing as the right to commit violence. It doesn't exist. Because violence is the immoral initiation of physical power to compel, coerce, restrain, which no one has the right to do. No, you don't have the right. No one does have the right to initiate that type of action. Force, on the other hand, there is a time and a place to exert that force in a defensive capacity. All right, so we'll talk about that here. This piece of trash comes up to somebody on the street and says, give me all, everything that's valuable. I want your shoes. Oh, they're leather? Take them off. Take the wallet out, all the jewelry. Give me your purse. Give me your wallet. Okay? It's called a thug. Nobody would believe he has the authority or the right to do that, and we would have the moral obligation to obey this criminal. You know? You know, if the criminal started calling himself government, we might start believing in it. Right? But let's say, let's say I, uh, somebody on the street saw what was being done, took out their own 9 millimeter, and blew this guy away. How many acts of violence were committed? One. One. But, but what I understand. But again, that's somebody saying, I prefer not to see it that way. Well, again, perception and reality do not really align in many cases. They're not the same. That person is in, incorrectly perceiving what is. They're not seeing the truth. And many people don't want to hear that that's the truth. Because they're very conditioned and they are very well-behaved slaves. You know, as harsh as that is to say. They don't want to understand that the inherent right to use force against violence exists and is always our right. Always. Now, I'm not telling you go out and immediately do that either because the perception is so screwed up in the body of humanity that the majority of people don't believe that would be a right. And they'll persecute you for doing it. You see, the, the self-defense principle is continuously being eroded. Human beings possess the natural right to defend themselves from violence with defensive physical force. A person who is accosted by violence possesses the right to stop the person who is conducting the violence from continuing to do harm to them with any amount of force that is necessary to stop the attack or the assault, okay, up to and including deadly force. I would say, to, if you want to be nice about it, give the person one verbal warning to stop. Say no once. After that, it's on. That's it. And that's really my policy, okay? That would be my policy on the street with an individual. The problem is here, the so-called authorities of the government, 
like you say, don't want to see it that way, and they're constantly trying to take this right away from somebody. They're constantly trying to say, no, we own the monopoly on the usage of force. And all you may do is wait and be accosted and assaulted until one of us shows up. Well, you know what that's called? It's called a big crock of bullshit is what that's called. And it shouldn't be accepted by anyone who has any common sense. Shouldn't be accepted by anyone. Unfortunately, again, like I said, people are very, very well conditioned. And they think that... They think that this is an example of two wrongs don't make a right. There's no two wrongs committed there. There's one wrong committed, and then there's a right that is being exercised. Big difference between exercising a right that involves the defensive use of force and committing a wrongdoing which involves the initiation of violence. And people got to get clear on this. They have to get clear on it. So the question becomes, does violence magically become a right when it's conducted by government? When they shut down people's free speech rights and assembly rights, or when they conduct direct theft from people through what's this euphemized form of slavery called taxation. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not asking you to accept or believe ta taxation is slavery. I'm telling you, if you don't understand that, you're wrong. I don't care what you think. I'm telling you, it is that way in truth and in reality. Taxation, slavery. Shutting down a people's rights is slavery. Telling people what they may or may not put in their body is slavery. It's not my perception. That's what is. Okay? And that's what we're accepting as a people. We're accepting that. These people have no more right to do it than any other individual would. 